you to do that again as we welcome our pastor, who is going to give us the encouragement for this morning. Please, Reverend John Scott. After Christmas, I always say, Happy New Mary. It just, it just, you know, it, 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 it embraces everything. So happy new Mary, my wonderful spiritual, worldwide spiritual family. Uh, this, this Christmas celebration is kind of an emotional thing for me. Um, that lovely carol, Just a Little Father to Go, uh, was written a few years ago by my brother Dennis. Um, over a Christmas season like this, there was a knock on my front door at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I, I, I get up at 4, so if it had been a little late, later, I would, have, I would have been wide awake already. But I was in my deepest sleep. I said, what is it? What happened? Everybody OK at home? He said, yes, but I have, a, I have a poem coming, and I need somewhere to write it. I said, why you don't go to your yard, boy? He said, no, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted the it's my word, I don't remember what he actually said, but it's the energy of your space. And so I made him a rum and bitter lemon, and he sat at my dining table and he wrote just a little farther to go. So um, it's in my heart. And him had just a little farther to go because he soon took off from this plane of activity to um, join the ancestors. And so my friends, that promise of Isaiah just rings in my heart every year. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And I used to say shoulders. And my dad, who was kind of a metaphysical student, said, no, son, you're sitting on one shoulder. I said, well, suppose you're giving me a piggyback, and I straddling him this way like how dad used to carry us. He said, it's shoulder. Just read it the way it's written in the Bible. So the government shall be upon his shoulder. And listen, his name shall be called Wonderful. Now, you know, friends, there's no magic in the name Jesus. Lots of people all over the world. I was trying to get the bank the other day, and I got one of those call centers. And, you know, I said, and who am I speaking with? And the person said, Jesus. So a lot of people are named Jesus. So there's no magic in the name. The magic is in the message that he brought. Wow. His name shall be called Wonderful. And he shall be a counselor. The mighty God. The everlasting father, mother, creator. Call it what you like. And so the part that really gets me right here, the prince, the prince of peace. What a thing to gather and celebrate on a Christmas Sunday, the coming to humankind of the prince of peace. You ever wondered why Jesus came at the time that he did? I, I used to contemplate it and ponder it a lot. Why did he come then? And it seems that perhaps, you know, every age has had its prophets, its, its, its people who could see through the veil of uh, the material world to the other side and who could tell humanity of the magnificence of their spirits. And sages and seers and prophets of every religion, Christianity doesn't have a, a, a patent on it, trust me have spoken these words that there is something in the world, something in creation, something so awesome, so wonderful that when it appears, angels, messengers of love and liberty and laughter, sing in adoration and in praise. And so my friends, on this Christmas Sunday, let us recognize the incarnation of that Christ essence in the manger 
of our hearts, in the stable of our lives. And you know, friends, Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this great teaching, said, and I quote, the action of God in me is the Christ of my being. The action of God in me is the Christ of my being. Can we proclaim that? The action of God in me is the Christ of my being. Say it in a half voice. The action of God in me is the Christ of my being. Say it in a whisper. The action of God in me is the Christ of my being. Say it in your heart in that little soft spot where the Christ will lay. And so think of it. Every time you wish someone Merry Christmas this season, or give or receive a gift, you are celebrating your own birth to truth. So just turn to someone in the area and say, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. A friend gave me a joke. They were, they were, wrapping, they were wrapping Christmas presents and they ran, out of, they ran out of Christmas bags. And so they had a birthday bag and they just wrote under the happy birthday, Jesus. <laughs> happy birthday, Jesus. And delivered the present. You, you know, the giving of and receiving of gifts is symbolic of the self-givingness of, of the creator to its creation. And our Declaration of Principles says it is not absorbed by its creation. So it created us and it is at the very center and circumference of our being. It is who we are and why we are and how we are and what we do. And so friends, the same heavenly voice that came to the shepherds as they tended their flocks, can come to each and every one of us if we would just take time to be still and to listen to the glad tidings of great joy. But sometimes we're so busy, you know, we, we tend our flocks to, you know, our flocks are our thoughts. And too often our thoughts are of lack and limitation, of anger and unforgiveness, of self-deprecation and not being enough and not being worthy. But when you came, the angels, all of creation, sang hallelujah on the Christmas morn of your awakening to the truth of your divinity and the perfection of your soul created in the image and likeness of Almighty God. Wow. And you know, friends, that message can come through many different channels. So I've told this story before, and my friend Carmen Clark will remember this little girl. Uh, you know, years ago in the 80s, when the HIV AIDS um, first appeared, the world was in the, the grip of panic and, and fear, much as it is now with COVID. And I had a, a a friend who was a medical doctor, and she was a, a, among the pioneers in the, the research of HIV. You know, there were all kinds of, of misinformation going around. Sound familiar? You know. And a group of us got together to take care of a friend who had been diagnosed. But this lady doctor discovered the first child to be discovered in Jamaica. Um, Carmen, do you remember how old she was? Five? Eight? Yeah, around there. Um, with HIV AIDS. And I said to her, Pat, that's the doctor, what can I get, Patricia, this girl, for Christmas? And she said, oh, John, you know what would be wonderful? Come and pick her up on Saturday and take her um, shopping in the plaza so she can choose her own gift. Well, I guess I'm a high risk taker, so I may pick up, may pick up the picnic Saturday morning and we went shopping. Now you know, friends, I have a confession to make to you. For years, I have been, I used to be irritated, I guess that's the right word, by Salvation Army kettles and that incessant bell ringing. 
as you go past them. I couldn't stand it. I used to give the Salvation Army clothes and stuff, to take it to the headquarters and leave it, but I never put any money in those Salvation Army kettles. They used to irritate me. And this morning, I went with this little picnic shopping. Did she want anything I showed her? Oh, look, Patricia, look at this red dress. Every little girl should have a red dress. Mm -mm. No, Uncle John. Well, look at these shoes. Patent leather. Every little girl loves patent leather shoes. No, thank you, Uncle John. All she wanted to do was to drop her money in the Salvation Army kettle. No, you know, it's Christmas time and every storefront, store door have one. And so we went along and I would try and stare her into a store, say, oh, look, let's go in here and see what they have. Oh, look at that big teddy bear. It's almost as big as you. A kettle down there, so I want to put our money in it. So we had to go and put another money in the Salvation Army kettle. And when we had done about six or seven, in exasperation, I said, look here, this can't go on. We can't spend the whole day and give away all our money. It has to stop somewhere. And she was holding my hand, and she looked up in my face, and she said, why do we have to stop? You know, children have a way, a clarity, that I, it, I, I don't know, if we could just maintain it ourselves. She said, why do we have to stop, Uncle John? This money is going to buy toys for little boys and girls who don't have an Uncle John to take them shopping. Lord, you, know, you know, when Sharon put them hand in your heart, she could have got anything from me. I would have signed over house, land, whatever. And so we had a wonderful day. And you know what she settled on? She settled on a hula hoop and a bell. So all the way home, it wasn't just a Salvation Army kettle. All the way back to university to the, the children's ward, she had tinkle, 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 tinkle. But she cured me. She healed me. She was the angel song that brought me the glad tidings at Christmas. And today, whenever I, I they come out on the plazas and at, you know, the, the shopping center, um, my heart just does a little for that little girl because she was the reason for my healing of a quite irrational and inexplicable dislike. I, I just know, though, that when you find you dislike things or people, it's a call to look inside yourself, you know. It's a call to say, no, why is this surfacing for me? I just wish all of you would develop the habit of journaling, of recording your thoughts, because you'd be amazed to know that writing, W-R-I-T-I-N-G, very often results in writing, R-I-G-H-T-I-N-G, because when you put it down, it no longer is a small ghost that, that kind of haunts you. Um, you get to look at it and to see what is it that's driving you and I'll, tell you, I'll talk a little bit more about that later because I, I have three suggestions for how we might prepare the cradle of our lives, of our hearts, of our existence to, to, to nurture and love and care for and adore this tender thing that is born in us again on this Christmas Sunday, the recognition of Christ. Ernest Holmes writes, and I quote, we are celebrating this month not just the thought of the greatest man who ever, who ever graced this world with his presence, but the birth into human consciousness, into each one of us, of something transcendent and immediate and effective and available. The divine presence revealing itself to us directly personally, intimately. There is nothing that can hinder us but ourselves, unquote. There is nothing that can hinder the birth and the growth and the unfoldment and the evolution of the Christ as you, but yourself. And so, you know, I know that wherever little Patricia is in the angel throngs. We had a little angel this morning 
four years old is she, Zara, playing the drum. Can we give her a round of applause? So you see, there is something about the children and their purity and the goodness. You know, they don't, they, they don't see through eyes of judgment and, and prejudice and um, negatives. They see through the eyes of the Christ the goodness and the beauty and the wonder and the love and might say to you, why do we have to stop, Uncle John? Why can't we just give and give and give? It doesn't have to be money in a kettle. Um, the little bell tinkling in your consciousness that says, what about giving of yourself? The gift of love, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of a kind word to somebody who perhaps you haven't given much thought to or who irritates the itchy two sticks out of you. The gift of your consciousness, my friends, of Almighty God as you. On a Christmas Sunday, can we, on this Christmas Sunday, resolve to live from that consciousness that we affirmed of the action of God in us being the Christ of our being. Say it for me again. The action of God in me is the Christ of my being. Can you say that for me? Is the Christ of my being. You know, one of my, my favorite stories um, it's by an unknown author, and it's titled A Brother Like That. And I'd like to share it with you as something for you to chew on. Reverend Helmer used to say, give them something, dear, to, to chew on. So this is the story. A friend of mine named Paul received an automobile from his brother as a Christmas present. On Christmas Eve, when Paul came out of his office, a scruffy little boy was walking around the shiny new car, admiring it. You can imagine a little boy, wide-eyed. I remember I used to have a Citroën Palace. It was a French-made car, and when you started, the, it, the hydraulics lifted the car up, and the little boy said to me, make it shake it, bottom again, sir. <laughs> you know, sure, we just have this one there, you know. So... Um, the little kid said, is this your car, mister? And Paul added, yes, my brother gave it to me for Christmas. The boy was astonished. You, you, you mean your brother gave it to you and it didn't cost you nothing? <laughs> boy, I, I wish. And of course, Paul was sure he knew what he was wishing for. He was wishing that he had a brother like that. But the little boy, what's, what the little boy said next stunned him because he said, I wish I could be a brother like that. And the miracle happened right there. You see, you see, the Christ comes to us without warning. Suddenly your heart is open and the, the, what you had against your father just melt and you are now free. Suddenly... All the things that irritated you are of no consequence because you feel this presence take a hold of you. And the, that Christ consciousness puts its little childlike hands into your heart and squeezes. Until you take, you sit up and take notice. And so something just snapped in Paul and he said, would you like to go for a drive? And you can't imagine a little boy in his terror clothes on a Christmas Eve getting a drive in a sparkling, spanking, brand new automobile with leather upholstery. And so he got in, eyes shining. 
And after a little while, he said, Mister, would you, would you mind driving by my house? And Paul knew again, of course I, will. I, I don't mind. Because he knew what that little boy wanted to do, or he thought he knew, was show off to his neighbors that he could drive around in a brand new spanking, shiny car with leather upholstery. And his little boy said, just can you just stop by those two steps right there for me, sir? And he pulled over. The little boy jumped out and ran up the stairs, and in a short while, he came out carrying his little crippled brother. And he sat him on the bottom stairs, and he sat beside him, and he said, see there? Just like I told you upstairs, that's a, a brand new car his brother gave him for Christmas, and it never cost him nothing. One day, I am going to be a brother like that, and I am going to buy you a brand new car, and we can drive all over town and look at all the pretty Christmas things. If the story doesn't say, he said, and put money in the Salvation Army kettle, but that is my version. Wow. That's the coming of the Christ in, in, in somebody's life. Because Paul learned the real meaning of the saying, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And so he put the little disabled boy in the front seat of the car and the bigger brother sat beside him and they drove all over town Christmas Eve looking at all the pretty things and listening to the Salvation Army kettles ring-a-ling-a-ling, -a school bell ring. And so my friends, that's how the Christ presents itself to you. If you would just take a breath and be still. It's, it's amazing what you can do. And so I wanted just to leave you with three things, simple things, that you can do for your assignment to make your heart and mind a welcoming environment for the new birth to higher consciousness and higher understanding that we are experiencing and celebrating today. Firstly, Whenever you find yourself involved in a discussion that is becoming predominantly negative, stop talk. Just stop talking. I was at Christmas dinner yesterday with family, and the conversation went in that direction, and we just stop talk. Don't say anything until you can say something positive and specific. Don't bother contradict them because that just leads to another argument. But just set your, 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 your mind like a laser beam in the direction of what is noble and beautiful and true in the world. And so that's what I did yesterday at lunch. And of course, the, the, the hostess is very proud of her garden. And as soon as I took a breath on how bad things are, I said, your garden is a garden of Eden that just changed the whole atmosphere. I said, what you do on, that, on, that, on those pansetias? You see, friends, negative thoughts crowd out the Christ. It's like you have this cradle and it's full of junk. You have to clean it out. You have to make your heart a suitable vessel, a suitable resting place for the Prince of Peace. Because remember, that little boy going to turn Prime Minister for the government going upon his shoulder. And his name is indeed called Wonderful. And the counseling that he's giving us today, he gave more than 2,000 years ago Love uno one another. Simple. Simple. No big rocket science. Just love God and love you one another. So you make space in the cradle of your heart by canceling the negatives. Secondly, look for beauty. Look for beauty in people and in places and in things. Make a positive, appreciative comment 
to two different people every day about some aspect of your physical environment. It doesn't have to be anything we can know. Boy, the pond them just separated this year, or um, somebody said to me, the white Wogan Villa, and I had just been to the gate of the Temple of Light and taken a, a selfie because it wasn't really of me. I wanted the Bogan Villa, and they outshone me. Just find something beautiful to share with somebody. And if it's not about the environment, maybe it could be the observation or compliment of a trait or a, a, something they have done or something they have said which has touched you. And you just say, you know, I really resonated with what you did or what you said or look for beauty, my friends. Because what, when you look for beauty, you find it. And if you look for the Christ, you will find it in the most unlikely and unexpected places. Because the Christ is everywhere, waiting to be acknowledged, waiting to be appreciated, waiting to be loved by you. So first, cut out the negatives. Second, look for beauty. And the third, which is where I, I really would want to, to um, encourage you to, to keep a journal, the, th the third is to reflect on the qualities of God. Choose an idea that has universal meaning. It can be love or truth or beauty. Choose an idea with universal, universal significance to you and reflect on those God qualities over this season coming into the end of the year. And watch for expressions of those God qualities in things that you read, in television shows that you're watching, or um, in your daily interactions with people. Some sources for that inspiration for you might be biblical verses or poetry or song lyrics or conversations with others or works of art. But it can just be in, in a walk around your garden or a walk around the temple garden. The God qualities are there, calling out to each of us, saying, come sing hallelujah. Come sing hallelujah on Christmas morn and help all of creation to acknowledge and celebrate and experience the coming of the Christ. And so as we prepare to wind up 2021 and set our intention for 2022, let us allow this Christ principle, my friends, the principle of sonship and daughtership with God. Bless you. Angel songs. Let the Christ principle make everything to you, including passing Motorists playing their, their songs of, of joy. A message of the peace that has come to earth in Christ, the Savior. And so, my friends, my prayer is that as unto this son that is born today in you, and which is born in all people and must be the experience of all humanity because all of God kind must return to God kind. That's why we have come to earth, to love, to serve, and to remember the truth of our divine origin. And so, may the eternal Father of all Accept the gift of your love, your life, the cradle of your heart as a fitting receptacle for the Christ, the Son of the living God. And may the eternal Father of all, to whom we offer our gifts of love and adoration and praise, be with you not just today and at Christmas, but all year through. Merry Christmas. God loves you and so do I. Namaste.
Thank you, beloved. Oh, what a wonderful message. We are celebrating the incarnation of the Christ in the manger of our consciousness. And that we need to take time in the busyness of, of our lives to pay tribute and to pay attention to the voice of spirit within us. And, and, and that voice is always heralding our divinity. Um, he spoke about the lessons that little children bring in their clarity, in their absolute um, lack of distortedness. You know, they're just come pure and clear. And he gave us three messages, three ways in which we can um, prepare the cradle of our hearts to um, experience the Christ within us. Um, there were three of them. He said, when we find ourselves in a situation that might be negative, we need to change the subject. We need to, to speak something positive, say something, um, something that is kind and beautiful and true to cancel the negative. He asks us to look for the beauty in people, places, and things, to find something beautiful to share with someone. And the third thing, to reflect on the qualities of God. What, um, and there are many of them, love, truth, beauty, joy, peace, to, to name a few. Wonderful message, Reverend John. Thank you so much. Let us give him another round of applause. <laughs>